Look, mm -hmm. Chi Chi, looking. Mm -hmm. Look, there goes the tail. Say, say good morning, everyone. Go on, Chi Chi. Say morning. This is coffee moaning. Mm -hmm. This is the place we have a bit of a moan and a groan. Sometimes we're happy and we shake our tail. Sometimes we wonder what the hell's going on in the world. Don't we, Cheech? Hmm? Why don't you sit and say hello? Given her eyesight right now, all that's talking to her is the table. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sit, Cheech, sit. 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 Good girl. <laughs> say hello to everybody. Say hiya. <laughs> How cute is that? How cute is that? Oh, that was a lovely Chi Chi moment. Morning, everybody. Should we turn it around? Just leave it showing the Domestos. <laughs> and the homeopathic kit. In Hello. In case you're wondering what that is, that's a homeopathic kit. I've got health anxiety at the minute. She's got health anxiety. I've got mental anxiety. I've just got. What, tell us about your. Tell us about your health anxiety, Nads. I've Why have you got, got health anxiety? I've just got health anxiety. It just just comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? Does it? You um. Yeah, I think there's just so much information out there. Inflammation. And then. Did you say inflammation? Infl inflammation. <laughs> I said and then the other day, I sent this to Kay and Jane yesterday. I said, "Is this now our future? What's that? Is this my future?" <laughs> Did you hear that dribble, dribble, dribble? I said, "Is this now my future?" Is this it? What? And they both sent laughing emojis back. Well, I'm finding it. In... Hang on. So I've I've just, got this hang on, hang on one text. second. So whilst you find that, I've, we've devised a new word, guys. If you're looking for information about inflammation, it's called inflammation. You give inflammation. Inflammation. About infl inflammation. Dear Miss Sawala, you are invited to the Hypertension Awareness event on the 31st of, <laughs> 1st of May, 4 till 7 at the Salvation <laughs> Army, 66 Thornton Heath High Street. Drop in any time. That was hey. from my GP yesterday. Do you know what I'm pleased about hearing that? I feel like you are hypertense a lot of the time. No, it's for high blood pressure. I know, but you are also hypertense. I've done my bowel kit, sent my bowel oh, stuff God, off. It's rock and roll, isn't it, in your <laughs> life? Bloody hell, bowel kit. What happened to the days of Jack Daniels and Coat until Because I'm at that age. What age? Well, apparently there was a piece in the papers today, did you see, saying the rise of the 50-something fitness freak. I saw that. Annoying. <laughs> Why? Because you're nearly 60. Because I'm not a fitness fan. I'm 60 next year. And the health thing's like, it's hey, just kicking in. Year. Oh, you are next year. I am 60 next year, am I? Yeah, but you're 58. The girl said I am. You're 58, yeah, but no. Hang on. You're 58 now, 59 this November, right, okay. 60. Yeah, so they're right, so yeah. Oh, someone else sent theirs off too. Should we all share on our bowel tests? It's good. I mean, don't get me wrong. This is really important. We're only talking, we're not mocking you know it or what? making light. We're talking about it as a market. Do you know of what? It really is because. I got my bowel kick thing months ago, right? And I put it in that drawer. And then, you know how these, you know how these stories come up and it was guy and the headline was- I am Ethan. You know, I had put my bowel kick in the drawer, did it three and four months later, and he had stage two bowel cancer. Anyway, that day I was talking to Makeup artist, she was just a standing makeup artist, lovely she was. And I was saying to her, I said, Oh god, you know, I've got to do my bowel kit. God, poor girl. And I was saying to this story that I'd seen in the paper, she said, That is exactly what happened to my uncle. She said he put it in the drawer and then he did oh, it. And then so, no, so this is just like if you were worrying about stuff, just get it done, get it seen to. Because nine times out of ten, there's nothing wrong, but the worry itself is bad for you. And when you think about Belle Babe and all the time she spent, my friend Tits was part of that campaign, you know. Mm, no, I do. Yeah. Just get these things done. Because then once I've done it and sent it off, I just felt so relieved that I'd just done it. Yeah, yeah. Take seconds. Seconds. Anything that's worrying you, just get it done. Um, well, there you go. Uh, we went on a very odd journey there via Domestos. Still can't quite keep up with this. And we've devised a new word, inflammation, and you've got health anxiety. I suppose that is, is kind of going to be de rigueur, isn't it, for the rest of our lives? Right. Until it's going to be de rigueur until rigueur mortis. Yeah. Oh, you always worry. I hate results. 
Isn't it funny? I mean, whether it be GCSEs, A-levels or blood tests, I just hate, I stumbled across my blood results the other day and I looked at the misty eyed. As I saw everything in the perfect category, I thought this is gonna be like this forever. It's not gonna stay like this forever, is it? Well, I'm waiting. We all demise. <coughs> I'm waking, waiting on a whole load of blood tests at the moment. I hate it. Don't you think the whole health thing is just like one of, it's ever diminishing returns. We are constantly going back to find out more and more and less and less. Oh, anyway, this is, I'm getting panic stricken now. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I've got to go to the dentist. No. Nah. Yeah. Okay, um, just quickly. I, I can't believe you booked the hygienist on your own and are going. I booked it nine months ago. That it. was what the waiting list was. Nine months You're ago. You're joking. They said, I said, can I book in? Because it was, I was doing my regular. And they said, you'll have to wait. It'll have to be May next year. God, and that's that's pretty painful. This was booked as well. in, yeah. Exactly. I don't think there is any free N a hygienist anymore. Free, is free there? NHS? What's that? Um, mm. Just quickly, I just want to pay reference to this because a number of people have just mentioned it, and you're absolutely right. What a bizarre story! Uh, this is the riots that have broken out in Cardiff. Two people dead. Uh, two teenager deaths. Car oh chases. Uh, this, there's rumours of a police chase that led to a fatal crash involving two teenagers that sparked riots oh in the city God. last night. Large scale disorder. At least two cars were set on fire it's in like troubles that fl it looks ghastly. Um, so, all we do know is that two teenage boys were involved in a crash, uh, officers attended, there was then, then a chase, and then all sorts of rioting broke out. I mean, one will never ever be able to explain in short termism what the causes of such a thing are, if such a thing was. But my God, that's awful that teenagers have died. Anyone in Wales know what the hell's going on there? Um, well, <laughs> a tinderbox of what? Poverty and, and yeah, and just unrest blight. and people just feeling hopeless. You take away hope; it's a very dangerous thing. I mean, we have experience. You know, when the riots happened in obviously not not the original Brixton riots. But, um, you know, there were those riots that summer when we were it's away in Turkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they often happen after a long sort of considered... It takes a sort of very tiny moment of something kind of not, not pleasant, but it and kicks off And do you remember what the police were <coughs> hoping for was rain? Yeah. Because it had been really hot, hadn't it? Yeah, and yeah, they yeah. said if it starts raining, everyone will go home. Absolutely. Now, is that our best bloody defence? Well... Hoping for rain. Well, yeah. Um... Yeah. Okay, so one of the big stories that was breaking yesterday was the Madeleine McCann story. Oh my God. Um, and you, you, Nadia said something this morning, which I thought, yeah, actually, let's say that. Because whenever you say the words, Madeleine McCann, horrible people emerge. It's really weird. I mean, we really always consider, I mean, we, we don't shy away from the Madeleine oh. uh, story. But you always know that it's going to bring out some really nasty... Yeah, really, really aggravating reactions. Now, poor people. Now, that's not to say that <laughs> many people have an opinion oh, yeah, that the McCanns yeah. were involved. And that's okay to have that opinion. But to be vicious in the way and the yeah. trolling that yeah. the McCanns have got, I just... Sold. I just said to Mark this Sold. morning, God, just imagine if they part, find this poor child's remains right where this German guy who's been under suspicion all this time was living. Do you think... How if, are they going to feel? Do you think if they did, and this is a catastrophic kind of, and is in no way a silver lining, that would provide an answer, obviously, for the tra tragic answer for the parents. Do you think in the awful and yet potentially, um, you know, sort of completing sort of a story or narrative, a grisly narrative, it's, say they found the, the remains, do you think everyone who's been beyond unspeakably horrible would step forward and go, oh, you know what, sorry about that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry we made it. <clears throat> no, because I think, I, think I, where, I think where people fall into, there is the difference between just horrible for horrible sake, but then there are a huge number of people who seem to fall into this category, which is they shouldn't have been neglectful in the way that they were. That's one thing. We can all argue and about a lot that. Of people... We can argue about that because I can argue about that because I, I, I've always yeah, but been... I want to say something Yeah, like but that. Let, let me just finish Absolutely. the second thought. You can, you can be critical of them being neglectful, but it doesn't naturally follow that if you're critical of them being neglectful that they got what they deserved. Do you know what exactly. I mean? That, exactly. Exactly. Because understand. it wasn't like you know. It, yes, if you if you've made that mistake, yeah, you've made a mistake, and you say they got what they deserve, you are saying an innocent child. Yeah. That's what I have so I much difficulty with. That you would think that an innocent child is payback. Whatever horrors happened to her is payback. 
Whatever to algebra the you learn doesn't work. Now, don't please, I really want to make this clear. I'm not saying that nobody should have a different opinion. No. I think absolutely everyone yeah, has a right yeah. to say, listen, you know, they were totally neglectful. I don't have sympathy for them, blah, 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 all of that. But it's the nastiest. I 100% believe them. I 100% believe what happened. I've known many people that at the time said that they had also been to the, that particular establishment, that particular hotel, that particular holiday park, whatever you want to mm. call it. And from the minute you get there, the atmosphere was very much the children are safe. And the people that were running that place would have felt that. There was no... Yeah. So, so, and you were encouraged to let the children go to the mm. playgroup, that there was this watch thing, that it was all very safe, you can see. So you could have been lulled, lulled into yeah. a false sense of security. And, you know, when, for years I was doing the Sun programme, Share Passport to Sun, all of these... And it was the thing we just constantly used to talk about was how people would come to Miorca, which is where I used to the show, and all of the normal behaviours that they would do at home would go out the window. Yeah. Oh, getting a bit pissed, girl walks home on her own, she would never do that. In, yeah, yeah. You know, and all these things would happen. Yeah. Because people let down their guard because they were on holiday. You know what it's like when you're on holiday? You think nothing can go wrong kind of thing, don't you? Oh, everyone's chilled. And it's this happy... You know, so I totally believe them. I, I can still go to the place of absolute horror when she was arrested, when Kate was arrested. I've said this before on here, that friends of mine that have made up the McCanns over the years for all their interviews have said it's literally like watching a person disintegrate into herself with sadness. They said, you know, if you touched a face, if you... you know, you would not think any feel anything than you know real sympathy for her. Um, so please, God, let there be some closure for them at some well, point. Well, okay. So Faith, yeah, you're asking what is the connection here? So the, the, this, the, they are searching. They are re restarting or doing another search of a, a lake or a sort of dam. It's called. It's near the Bar Barahem du Arade Reservoir, uh, fifty kilometres from Praia de Luz. Uh, where she went missing, and it's the German police who have it's requested the, German police. the, 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 the search. Yeah, or the, that's what's really interesting. Yeah. And so we, so no one, obviously, no one knows the exact reasoning because, of course, the police aren't going to reveal that; otherwise, it could compromise the investigation. But presumably, this has stemmed out of the fact that Christian Bruckner oh, um, uh, is in prison, isn't he, uh, yeah. in, in Germany? So. The fact that the German police have asked to sort of look and dredge and investigate and search the lake or the dam... Where his caravan yeah, was. Yeah, they've already been there before. Apparently he describes it as having been his, his sort of... his oasis, didn't he? His safe oasis. God. Um, so there must be some pretty... Well, there have been many moments where there have been compelling... has been compelling evidence... Sometimes you worry, I don't know when you've watched these sort of serial killer films, which are often based on true stories. I sometimes worry that, you know, there's a lot of narcissistic ego potentially in these criminals. You know, he might be enjoying, you know, offering yeah. the, these yeah. tidbits of possibility. Yeah. And so, in, but, psychopaths, but the, in a psychopathic fashion, like... yeah, so he wants them to go rushing off. I mean, we've seen it in dramas all the time, but this, you know, could he be doing the same thing? I mean, we don't know he's a psychopath, but we are assuming if everything comes, you know, yeah. But, but yeah, there is often that gay cat and mouse game played. Yeah, isn't Lee Durrant sort of sums it up. He says, uh, you, you don't think they sh you feel they, they shouldn't have left her uh, in the room unattended, but of course that doesn't mean that they should have, they, you know... Payback. They got, they People got have payback. said, well, that's payback. But it is, it is Excuse me, strange that's a three-year-old quickly... child, it's... and everything that happened to her is, is warranted. Yeah, strange how quickly so people get strange, to that place. Isn't it? Maybe part, could part of it as a kind of... You know, an excuse is a sort of fear, a sort of almost a reactive fear that it's the only way they can cope with it is to be cross with them because it's so awful. Because Perhaps, it's so awful, know. it's all our yeah, great fear. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe. Um, so that's the. Tell me what though. From that, since that, I genuinely do believe the tragedy <clears throat> that the McCanns went through saved many, many more children. Because well, a lot everybody became so much more careful. But a lot of people were also very upset that they got so much special treatment. 
So, you know, there's two ends of the opposite stick there, isn't there? No, no but I mean, the, the publicity at the time, I mean, nobody was then going to ever leave their child in the villa oh, while they... Yeah, that's well, what we'll, I mean. we'll never be able to quantify how many kids yes, have been saved. that's what I mean, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, that, what mean. in that people's behaviour changed, I think, maybe... What do you think of that, guys? It's yeah. highly unlikely that anyone at any of the Mark Warners, again, mm. were, you know, left their child in the apartment mm. knowing that mm. there was going to be a walk around or something. Sarah like D, people parent in different ways. I would never leave my children in my house on their own, let alone in a strange place in another country, but I don't think anyone deserves their child to be kidnapped. I mean, that's exactly. a, it's a kind of given, isn't it? I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, I, I could never feel comfortable with having left the kids in that manner, but I don't then go to the next step in such a sort of dehumanising fashion of going, oh, you got everything you deserved. I, just, I don't get it. I don't, just I don't Do you understand that. that one time um, with the kids in Spain? What? You know, when you would never take your eyes off me. So oh my God, we were, on the, no, no, we were on the beach and they were running up the beach. Well, I had real anxiety beach. always. And I said, listen, and it was me and Kay, wasn't it? And we said, listen, just don't be so anxious. Let them oh just be God, there. Oh my God, I could have smashed a pair of you Let them just be there and together. you be there and you were with Kay's partner. And then we'll be here and me and Kay were like going up and down. My God, I'm not I... kidding. But there's no exaggeration. I was sat in this, we were in this sort of beach sidebar. They'd gone off. I've always been uneasy. I'm, I just never like the kids get... And I, it was like, I don't know if you remember in Jaws, there's that moment where Roy Scheider is sitting in the chair and there's the woman looking for her child, do you remember? And then she's calling and he's trying to look. And do you remember how he shoots it really cleverly where Roy Scheider's trying to look round the people keep getting in the way? Yeah. You guys were talking about something. We and went off and the, we said to you, don't, you've no, got no, to no, stay no, there, yeah, let no, them we out talking to you, And then we, I was talking to someone, I think I was talking to Ian. And then, and, but as we kept talking, I wasn't locked in because I kept, and I couldn't see them and I just got a sense. And then I stood up and I, I just started walking without any warning. We were just on a beach. So we hadn't left them anywhere. They're playing on a it's beach. Quite incredible. Inside. And when we went over, some guy. I can't remember happened? the exact what happened now because in my head, and he me and Kay came back. In front and we of them. Saw, so there was a guy, no, he was asking a them to young do man, acrobatics. And, and we were like, what's going on? And he was like holding the kids, wasn't he? And he was like saying, I'm going to teach you gymnastics. Do you remember? And the girls and said he, that they were really uncomfortable with it, but they didn't know what to say. And he was like doing a back bend and he was holding. I went, I went ballistic. Oh, oh my, my God! Christ. I mean, he. It, there is no doubt he was dodgy. And what was this? Was the really important th lesson that we learned from this? The girls, all the girls, said they they, they felt knew. something wasn't right. But because they were so polite, and they didn't want to do like whatever you were saying, do back bends, wasn't he, or something? They wouldn't say anything to him. Yeah. So, you, so it's that thing of saying to your kids, if it doesn't feel right, go go away, scream your head off but yeah. they, they were just too polite weren't they they said oh they were worried if it was yeah. rude yeah. but their gut told them this guy was dodgy I can't remember, did, you... did you speak to him or yeah. shout at him i can't remember he ran off didn't he oh i can't remember now it, it was just it was ghastly. i can't remember the but detail this, but we were all really extent, shaken that up. was the extent to which they weren't in my line Come of vision on. for a moment as they popped behind someone i was talking to's head no, no, they long? were out of your vision for yeah, quite a while, Mark, because he was teaching yeah, they were just the over the, They were just over yeah. the beach, though. They were just beyond. It was my bear. <sighs> anyway, yeah. Um, yeah. I just want to quickly mention this, because I just think it's really important. I haven't got too long. Um, this story, stick with me on this. It, it, rape victims should get free independent legal advice, says the Law Commission. I think this is a really important thing. This is about, this is basically a sort of response to the fact that we've talked about many times on here, that for the number of uh, rape cases that come forward, and let's not forget, the number of rape cases that come forward bears no relationship to the number of rape cases that, that don't happened. come forward yeah. um, and don't progress through the courts. This is uh, the Law Commission suggesting that what needs to happen in rape cases is that rape victims should be entitled to free independent legal advice. They should also, they're also talking about being able to vet and um, not remove the potential for, say, cross-examination by, you know, say, rape, the, per the rapist's defence, you know, the person who's being accused of rape, their defence barrister, has the right, obviously, legally, to ask any questions they want. But they're, they're, they're pushing for the ability for the, to, to have those questions vetted uh, by the judge. And I think this is really important because it's a way for them to be able to remove what they call sort of rape myths and how so much of our culture and our system 
you know, the idea that is a woman asking for it, the idea that if a woman Clothes is wearing skin, you know, yeah, mm. a sort of miniskirt, the idea that Whether if a woman drunk. started having sex, decides to say no to having sex, should that be listened to? You know, all those kind of received, embedded prejudices, it's not going to remove them, no. but I just thought this was a really important sort of... And, there, and there's a range of other sort of proposals here where lines of questioning can be interrogated, that they're all entitled to their own as I say, free legal and independent legal advice. Judges would be asked to consider the risk of perpetuating myths and misconceptions under a new framework for restricting the use of evidence of complainant sexual behaviour. They'll be able to interrogate whether it's right or not to bring in past history. You know, sexual, any past sexual, should any past sexual history be brought into any no, situation. Absolutely not. Exactly. So it's, it's things like that. That's a rape myth. That's a, that's another sort of received wisdom, isn't it? But this? when I hear the word judge, I hear, I he, I feel very scared. Yeah. <laughs> because historically, I suppose it's because we only hear about the really negative cases. Yeah. But I think of judges, and I think of all the things I've ever heard judges say. In well. This. So it's like, are these judges? going to be vetted to be judges that don't have these myths anyway. Well, I think, the, and I think what's good about this development is that they're looking at the ways in which they can remove the idea that it sits upon the shoulders of one 75-year-old man. Yeah. But it's actually, perhaps there's going to be a sort of Crown Prosecution Service sort of uh, panel of, of judges to whom, you know, I don't, I mean, how it's going to be worked, that's what they're looking into. But you know But what? I think this is they're a move in the right direction. It. This yeah. is this is some this is a good day because we do want yeah. more and more movement. We've been static in the way that we deal with all these things, and this is this yeah. is good. This is good. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so Obviously I just I the d- finer details are going to be important. The, fi- the finer details, absolutely, moment. how they implement it. But I mm. think the idea is brilliant, and I think the the you know I th- and, and and also you know the idea that you're of that much safer and that you don't have to pay for, you know, uh, legal aid, legal support mm. or anything like that will we'll change the possibility. will we'll mean that many, many more, more women will be able to come through. Yeah. I didn't know well, yet. Not, well, not everyone does, but, you know. Mm. Um, this story, uh, are we going to save the, the, the funny, well, funniest or best to love, Wedding Revenge is coming up. Oh but this, God, this story... is funny. This, no, no, well, it's not funny. Well, no, it this, is, this, in a way. <laughs> this story came up last night, and I just want to know what you think, guys, because... Th- they were going mad at midnight on LBC when I was listening to this in my one remaining AirPod because I can't find it. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's up your, the crack of your bottom. We both it's lost one AirPod so on the annoying. same night. Do you know what I think it might be? Yeah. I think it might be under the mattress cover. I've already looked there. Did you take all the sheets off? Yeah. No, because then what? you might have been frightened do you ever do, to put it in the washing no, machine. No, do you ever do that thing where you pull bedding off looking for something and you pause and to hear it land? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it didn't happen. But the um, other night, mine fell onto the floor and it bounced. I was deep sleep and I thought, oh, oh my God, he's going to think that's his and maybe he's going to pick How it up. Maybe it was, you know? Because it was in my ear. Oh, now I hadn't even thought Mark, about it. My phone triggered an AirPod the other day and it wasn't on. You've got my, you Don't found my, know. you found Mark. my AirPod. Why is your nose red? Is it? Hmm. A little bit. God damn okay. health anxiety. Uh, so I've talked before about the fact that the moment I gave up smoking, seriously, was when we were in Australia, saw a packet of fags, there was a horrendous photograph of the deep, dark danger that cancer can either do to the mouth, the foot or something. And I remember thinking, I can't put my children through this. This is not, you know, let's use some of the same you attitude to, to not up. drinking. You tried to give up smoking tried, loads, but it wasn't until we were in Australia and you saw the photo. That's what I just well, said. No, but I thought you didn't say the photo. Yeah, I did. Oh, sorry, yeah. John. Sorry. Um, and so, anyway, this isn't quite the same thing, but this is, Ireland is the first country, this is what they're saying, that's actually on, on the labels for its alcohol is going to say that alcohol can cause cancer. Which we know it, it which, does. Which, it was really interesting last night. They had a, they had a medical expert on uh, talking about this. Everyone's like, no, no, you can't do this. Don't put... It's, and what I was hearing as people were calling in behaviors. was a societal denial. <laughs> it was like... Just because it's the case, we don't want to know. The Italian winemakers are up in arms because they're saying this is the beginning yeah. of setting a precedent where consumer choices will change. Yeah. Well, Ireland. But the yes. wonderful thing is, is that the Republic of Ireland is going to do this. Now, they had, I think the health minister from Ireland was also talking, saying we have a profound health problem, oh, like so many countries do. But, so, but Ireland also taking ownership of the fact that they have, there's a huge cultural drinking problem, just as there is here, no more there than there is here. There's always that characteristic that Ireland is a huge drinking nation. Look at us. Um, 
But the idea that it comes from Ireland is quite sort of, there's something quite sort of, in a way, poetic about that, if you like, because Ireland is becoming the first country essentially to mandate health labelling on alcoholic drinks to alert people to calorie content, grams of alcohol, risks of cancer and liver disease, and dangers of drinking. Now, of course, the drinking lobby and all the drinking manufacturers and alcohol manufacturers... Like the gun lobbies. Like the gun lobbies. They don't want don't it to want, stop. And the government doesn't want this to happen because of the amount of money they make, they make through it all. So this is a real... This is a curveball. This is a curveball because this is... Alcohol single-handedly causes billions upon billions upon billions upon billions of demand on the NHS. And if people were to just stop drinking as much we could probably resolve so many issues within society. But no one really wants to hear that. No. And don't want to want it on their label on their bottle of wine. No, but I do think it's important because it is a poison. Now, listen, I love a drink. I love a drink. And I'm always going to drink through my life. But I have moderated my drinking so much, like, just unbelievably, because it just makes me feel better. Alcohol, I know, kills. I know gives you anxiety, I know causes depression, well, exacerbates depression. So I've made all those deci- informed decisions by myself, but a lot of people just don't realise. <laughs> it always makes me laugh because people say, oh, HRT, you know, breast cancer. Do you know yeah. you're at more risk of breast cancer from just two alcoholic drinks a night? If you didn't drink two drinks a night, and remember, that's one shot a vodka, so if you're having two gin and tonics like that every night, or a glass of wine that big, two of those a night puts you at greater risk of breast cancer than HRT. But but it's it's never, it's not really spoken about in those terms. Esophagus, huge rise in esophagus cancer because of the amount of young people drinking so heavily. But she said last night, she said alcohol is the only substance, white wine, I forget the phrase she used. There's a phrase where, you know... 224. No, 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 no. There's a phrase they use where they say that alcohol could cause something. Apparently alcohol, in certain types of cancer, it's an absolute guaranteed connection. It's not a possible... Breast cancer being one of them. Not all breast cancers. No, 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 but she said white wine and breast cancer, certain breast cancer. She said there is a direct, unequivocal correlation. She said it's very rare in medical science that we can say... That this for is everyone, for sure. this is for sure. And she said, we have it with this, for sure. And she said, now people are saying we don't want to know about it. Which, and I have to confess, it always strikes me as odd, like you say, that people will get really hot under the collar about HRT and all these other things. And often there are people sitting there with a bottle of Prosecco <coughs> saying, you mustn't do this and you mustn't do that and you mustn't do this. I know I've said that for our regular visitors here, I'm sorry, but for anyone that's new, I, I was told by this liver expert, if there was one thing she could take out of this world to save, to reduce the level of breast cancer in women, it would be white wine and Prosecco. So women should stop drinking because white wine and Prosecco. women's liver, women's liver can't process the chemicals and stuff in it. Now, the other night, and last tequila. night, Maddie and I were watching um, Housewives of Beverly Hills. It was an old one. And they were, they were drinking and suddenly... This horrendous fight broke out. I mean, it, Maddie said there's memes upon memes upon memes about this fight. And we were laughing because we went, white wine. They'd all been drinking white wine. And I, I was saying to Kiki, you see that woman there? And she was like, yeah. I said, that's what your mum used to be like on white wine. She was like, no. I said, yeah, because my body literally can't process whatever those chemicals are they put in it. And Jane Moore did a, did a, a What's those documentaries where they investigate? Jane was telling me that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she said that the amount of chemicals that they're allowed to put in white wine yeah. and Prosecco, non-organic, is scary. It's interesting, so yeah. So switch your drinks. Interesting line here, Good Ship Lollipop. I'm sure you're not meaning it as insensitively as you are. <laughs> Jesus, guys, we only live once. It's so weird you should say that. I was in an Alcoholics Anonymous meeting last night and a woman was in there whose father had tragically passed away with... Um, alcoholism and cirrhosis of the liver and was a chronic alcoholic but was never never acknowledged it himself and his last words to her before he was caught up in a terrible health disaster that killed him and she's obviously you could argue inherited this or whatever were oh God, uh, God. what was it you just said Don't come on guys we only live once was what he said Did she it? talked about those words so even Did i mean she? i know you're not you're not suggesting it for real good no. shit, lollipop but you know it's interesting we can trot these lines out and there, but for the grace of God, go you. Fine, you don't have to but, but, but read, let's you know, just read think the label. About but for that. other people, it can be quite serious. Yeah, there's a woman in your AA meeting. Yeah. 
with alcoholism herself yeah. and all she will have gone through with her father being an alcoholic unimaginable yeah. if he's an active alcoholic and then to watch him doing having a slow painful death from it but justifying it by saying we only live once yeah well you could oh you do only live once but it's the quality I mean, of that you life know what? Really, there are it? lots of people that and, and, and i support them as well people that say do you know what i just want to keep doing what yeah, I'm doing. yeah i'll, yeah, I'll, I'll die younger absolutely. and i think if you hadn't got married and yeah. had kids you would have made the choice that you yeah. would prefer to drink. If you're and on your own and you've got no responsibilities yeah. and you're not going to hurt anyone or let, any, let anyone down, go for it. I as long as you're not going to make a demand on anyone else, you're not going to yeah. cause concerns or problems for the police, you're not going to make, you're not going to drain unlikely. the mental health services, unlikely. you're not then going to fight someone else, you're not then going to cause distress to other people who see yeah. you in the street. It's very hard to actually be uncontrollably. Just addicted to alcohol and not actually affect everyone. And so, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, certainly not wishing to home in on what you said, but it just struck me, literally, guys yeah. who only live once was what the last words wow. that a recovering alcoholic last night said, her father said before he died of alcoholism. Wow. Oh, thanks for that good yeah. shit, Dolly. Well, that's uh, great. Because that's a really, that's, that's a really salutary. poignant story, isn't it, at the end of this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But anyway, quick point. Someone else just said that. Ireland are on it. Ireland were the first to ban smoking in pubs. There you go. There You're you on go. it. Well okay. done, Ireland. So, Have should we save the story for tomorrow? I think yes. we should do wedding revenge tomorrow. It's a really good story. Yeah, we've got to head off. All right, my darlings, lots of love. Have a lovely day. Uh, we'll be popping stuff up on the Coffee Morning Instagram account. Questions, polls, all those kind of things. Look forward to seeing you there.